Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad that you're here with us today. Today, our guest is Matt Nash, joining us as the Executive Director of the Black Bod Giving Fund. And he's got a lot of really good things that he's going to share. Most importantly, engaging donors where they are now. So Matt, thank you for joining us. And we will certainly um, ask you to share a little bit more about yourself in just a moment. But before we do that, we want to remind our viewers, as well as our listeners across the globe, who we are. So hello to you, Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, and honored to serve alongside day in and day out for these awesome conversations. We wouldn't be where we are having these awesome conversations if it weren't for our amazing friends that allow us these opportunities uh, to have the high-level dialogue. So thank you to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Please check these companies out. I always like to say, do us a favor, yourself a favor, and them a favor. Um, but really, they are here to help you do more good. So check them out and see how they might be able to help you as well as your team. Hey, if you missed any of our episodes or you want to go back and listen to what Matt is about to share with us, you can find us on uh, many streaming broadcast platforms as well as podcasts. And the latest and greatest is the app. So make sure that you grab your smartphone, uh, do a QR scan, and that will pull up the app for you. And just a couple hours later, you will see uh, the notification of today's episode being uploaded. And again, today's guest, we are so fortunate to have Matt Nash with us, Executive Director of the Black Bod Giving Fund. Welcome to you, Matt. Why, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this. Well, you thank know, you. Matt, you said something so interesting. I mean, pretty much everybody knows about Black Bod, but not everybody knows about the Giving Fund. And you said something really interesting. You're like, yeah, sometimes people will you know, say, where did this check come from? You know, they don't know about specifically the giving fund. So tell us a little bit about that and about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, and in fact, it actually happens probably once every two or three weeks, I get a call from a nonprofit that says, hey, I have this check for, you know, a thousand dollars and I, are you a scam? And it's like, no, 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 we're the real deal. <laughs> as long as you're a nonprofit and you get the check from the Black Bob Giving Fund, it's it's real, you can you can cash it because it's uh, got donors behind it that want to support the, the nonprofit. So, uh, but the Giving Fund is a, it's a 501c3 uh, sponsor of a donor advised fund. Uh, and the way we operate is we support really two key components of, uh, of Black Bod's business, although we are, as, as I said, a separate uh, uh, charity and, and not part of the organization. The first part is workplace giving. So there's corporations all over America that set up you know, capabilities for their employees to, to give and to volunteer and, and uh, integrate matching donations with. And those donations come into the Black Bod Giving Fund with a recommendation about where they want those funds to go. And our job is to get those funds to those nonprofits. And in uh, 2022, we distributed $682 million to 140,000 charities around the world. And so it's a, it's a terrific experience to, to be a part of this and, and be a part of the, the, the global good that we're able to accomplish. Amazing. The other part of it is peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. So uh, there are campaigns that people set up um, that want to give to to charities. Um, that's through a, an organization that Blackbot has called Just Giving, and uh, we handle all their uh, their disbursements in the United States for the peer to peer giving of that particular program. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited to learn from you, and thank you for sharing a little bit about that. I can't imagine Julia, right? Like getting that check and saying, "Is this for real? Is this legit?" Uh, <laughs> no. but and to know that it happens quite often, Matt, is really interesting. It is. Um, well, let's talk about and jump right in to talk about attitudes of donors, um, you know, what you're seeing, what your team is seeing. And so really, what are you seeing when it comes by way of the current attitudes of our current donors? Sure, sure. Well, I, I think everybody knows that uh, in general, the, the donor population is in decline over the last you know, two decades. Uh, however, the dollars in, in, in giving are going up because it's tending to be focused more on the 
on the wealthier donors. But in the work that we do, we deal with your every, every, average everyday donor, right? They're employees of corporations, mm-hmm. and we get a chance to see sort of how they think and and, and what they like to, to do. And there's really a couple of themes that have been coming out over the last four or five years that I think are really accentuated since the, the pandemic that, that we all somehow managed to, to live through, right? Uh, and one is they want to be more intentional. There's a there's a more focus because of all, everything that happened during that period. I think a lot of people kind of reassess their lives and, and what was really important to them. And before, I think people used to be more what I'll call reactive. You know, it's their friend that went on the run and said, hey, you know, would you sponsor me for the run or, or the ride or whatever it is? And, yep, you'll, you'll get $50 off your, your credit card. But now it's like, you know, what's important to me? And why do I want to get involved? And, and when I do, I want to be more involved and, and understand more about the organizations that I'm supporting. And that, that's a key component that is sort of deep down within these individuals and, and creates a, both an opportunity and a challenge for nonprofits in terms of how they communicate. Because it's, it's one level deeper than, okay, here's who we are, we want some funds. It's like, well, how do, well do we match up with what you care about? And that creates an interesting, you know, communication opportunity for for nonprofits. And you know, I also go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say one of the things I've noticed, gosh, probably in the last eight to ten years, is this phrase: "You vote with your dollars," right? And I know that this is intended for consumer behavior about what we purchase. Essentially, is you know a vote in what we believe in. But I have to say that also goes with our charitable choices, right? Like we're voting with those missions, the impact, the beliefs that we have and how we want to see that either move forward or eradicated, right? And so I just couldn't help but but to mention that when we talk about it, because I feel like that's that's a mentality and a current attitude. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's you know, what's important to them. Um, I even add that they vote with their time. Right, um, because yeah. they they want to participate, they want to, to volunteer and get engaged with with these donors, right. particularly through the workplace. We see uh, a higher rate by three to one of people who volunteer as part of these corporate programs as opposed to give, because it's really the first introduction. It's their first opportunity to to see what these nonprofits do, and often for particularly for the younger employees. It's the first opportunity for them to truly be an intentional philanthropist. I sometimes have a hard time saying that word Uh, because in the past they've all been, you know, they would help or they would do what their parents were doing or their, their, you know, friends in high school were doing. And now it's them and they want to understand it more and, and get involved and get engaged. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what about the contact, right? Like, I feel like this has been an age old conversation um, because I remember 20 plus years ago when I started in the sector, right? Like sitting around the boardroom and hearing board members say, we send out too many communications to our donors. So are donors overly contacted by our organizations? I think the answer to that one is probably yes and no, right? (laughs) And I'm not trying to, 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 to divert the question. It's just that the way we think about it is are, are nonprofits there where the donors are? And if you're there where the donors are, then you're not over communicating because you're hitting them at the, at the right time. And there's nowadays there's just such a myriad of places where they could be both physical and, and uh, virtual that um, it, it's hard to really figure out, you know, where you want to be and and how you want to communicate it but the one thing that we know is they're all looking to understand the purpose the outcomes the impacts what what is the nonprofit accomplishing and to resonate with that either through an email or be on social media or you know show up in the events that uh, that people go to uh, where they gather and where they they have fun or where they do work together uh, are all key things i think for nonprofits to think about in this age of how do we get through the, how do we break through, how do we get our message across? You know, Matt, I feel like we, I don't think the question is, are we um, contacting people too much? I think the better question is, what are we sending? Like, what are we communicating? 
And it, to your point, if we are just asking, you know, money, 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 help us get through the day versus this is what we did, more of the impact focus, telling the stories and not, and drilling down, not just these, you know, things that go on for pages and pages and pages. I think the better um, direction is short snippets that are more impactful. Um, and in that, it's hard to do. It's super hard to do. It's easy to say. <laughs> But I'm wondering if you're seeing, you know, folks that are more successful than others in terms of, of what we're pushing out. Yeah, it's a combination, I think, of um, telling the story, right? which is really what you're saying there, right? Is, you know, the impact is really the story. And people remember stories. I think that's pretty well known among all fundraisers we're talking to out, out, out there today. Um, but in addition to that, it's like, are there other ways that, um, the the donors can get connected to the information. And so, for instance, we deal with you know there's these platforms out there. So there, all the donors now are coming through some sort of you know, technology platform, and in those platforms, there's information about the the nonprofits, and that's a really good starting point for nonprofits to be clear on the data that they're sharing because large organizations, all the no big donor advised funds, will use these these tools. All the groups like Black Bar Giving Fund that manage workplace giving all manage these platforms that have information that the companies use to broadcast to their employees about here's the nonprofits that are out there, here's what's available to you, here's what's available in, our, in your community, um, here's what's available in your community and what the causes that we as an organization are supporting in this round of, of giving over the next three months. Um, and it allows the, the donors to focus on, okay, here's some information about specific topics or specific geographic areas that I can get involved with and experiment with and learn more about because as I learn and I get involved, I get interested, I get inspiration, I get committed. Yeah, yeah Julia, I think for me, it really depends on how we engage with the donor from the onset, right? Like knowing what was their original motivation to becoming a supporter mm -hmm. and getting to know, you know, them through relationship building, because all too often, and I'm curious, Matt, if you see this too, where it's like, we just send out shotgun approach communications. Mm -hmm. We're not segmenting. We're not, you know, really knowing what they want to be engaged with. Um, that's what I'm seeing. And when I do my development assessments, right, I see that like there's one email communication list and everybody gets everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I agree. Yeah, yeah right. I agree. I think it's it's a real disservice. And 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 that is um yeah, not a good way to go. Matt, are you you're you must be seeing this as well. Yeah, I think there's the old adage you have to fish where the fish are. Right. 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 <laughs> and uh I, you know, here's some things that, that, that we see. So, you know, a corporation is trying to improve their brand image in the communities that they work. And they might have operations all over the country. And when uh, there's a corporate social responsibility person who's trying to get you know, their employees engaged with the nonprofit sector in these cities, then they, they, they look out for, hey, are there our voluntary opportunities out there? Are there ways that we can connect and partner with a nonprofit to do real good in the community? Uh, and if, if a nonprofit can link into that, that's a very targeted way of, of communicating with, with donors. And you know when you add them all up today, uh, there's 30 million American employees that are participating in these programs, have access to them. And that's a very large target audience. But what's nice about it is it, it can be you know, brought down to what are the, the, the corporations that operate in our community? That narrows it down. How do I connect with them? Well, first look in your databases and say, you know, if you're in South, Charleston, South Carolina, Blackbaud's there. If, if you have people from, have emails of blackbaud.com, they're all from the same company. And you can begin to, to learn about you know, which companies are operating and trying to do things to support you in those local cities, which gives you an opportunity to connect with them. Yeah, goes back to data. We've always, we've always said how sexy we think data is. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's a lot of information in donor databases. And uh, you're right, Matt, like just looking at the email address, you know, what is the, the final piece of that email address gives you a lot of information. 
yeah, it's it's a place to start. It's a place to start simply. Uh, we find that you don't need to have a lot of, uh, you know, data analytics to know that I'm getting money from Fidelity Charitable or that right. I'm getting money from, you know, employees of co Corporation X, Y, or Z. You, you simply have to scan the database and see what's in there. And once you do that, then you can begin, you know, acting on that knowledge and say, okay, I've got these. Now let's communicate th with them in a, maybe a different way because we know that they're part of something. And if they're part of something, let's talk to them about that and recognize it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to put up your catcher's mitt because this is like a wild pitch. But okay. <laughs> you know, what what do you see? I mean, as someone who's on the insider, you're at a high level, um, and you are educated about this in in a career long capacity. Um, what do you see that you like and that you think is like smart? I mean, I would imagine there are organizations that are doing it really well. And like Jarrett and I see organizations that are not doing it well. Could you throw out a couple tips or ideas for folks? You, you don't have to name them necessarily, but just to say this seems to be really effective. And, and as a consumer and as a leader in the sector, I respond to this. Yeah, yeah. I have an example. I can't say who the organization yeah, was, but that's okay. uh, what I like about this example is it's so simple, right? That they were looking to, to understand more about, in this case, donor advised fund donors. Okay. And they started with their database. Okay, what's in the database? Who do we, and they're identified in there, and at least enough of them, right? They might not, some of them might be anonymous, but there's, there's a lot of them that aren't. Once they did that, they, they said, okay, now, what do we know about these these are people and in gen data donor advice fund donors in general well they're committed to you because they're already giving to you money that they're supporting out of that fund they're intentional about giving to you because they've probably done it over some period of time because you could see that and then then they began just speaking to them around we know you're a donor advice fund donor we are not going to invite you to Use your donor advice fund to spot, to come to our gala or our right. our uh, you know uh, lottery and, and and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then what they would do is when they had a specific campaign that they wanted to do to tap into resources that were already out there, then they sent the proactive message. We know you're a donor advice fund donor. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. It's a special campaign. We would love for you to help us support yeah. that and they increased their giving from the midterm donor by like 30 percent in one campaign oh i love that yeah. i love that. you know and it doesn't seem like a heavy lift it seems like you know your business um because i i don't want to use the four little word that i really want to say you know your business and you just act on it right like this is exactly what what we need to do and saying we know this is who you are. We acknowledge that. We appreciate that. And here's what you're asking, you know, what we're asking you to do. So perfect example. Yeah, not a heavy lift, but yet on the other hand, it's maybe a different lift. Right. Than the system that the nonprofit has to, to raise funds. And so you have to kind of step out of that and, and spend some time and energy trying to get more focused. Right. Um, but I remember the quote, the, my favorite quote from this you know, interaction was, Look, we did all this work to understand who they are and communicate with them better. And then we did what we know how to do best, inspire the donors to give to help us. Love it. That Thank you for sharing that because that that's perfect. And I think it's a, a mindset shift that we all need to be embracing. Um, and the technology is really allowing us to do this more. But if we don't get our teams behind thinking in a new way, we're just going to be like sending out the Mother's Day appeal type of thing. Yeah, technology is the tool, yeah. right? Yeah. Technology is the tool. It's the intelligence that, that we bring as really good fundraisers to know how to appeal to these individuals. Right, right. You know, before we let you go, because our time is blown by and we said this uh, in the green room chatter, we we're like, oh man, this is going to go by fast. You did warn me about that. I know. And even, yeah. I have to say, even Jarrett and I have now doing this for four years, even we are shocked at how fast it goes every day. So that's, I guess, a good thing. Um, insights into the next gen donors and, and, and their behaviors. I want to kind of end with this today because Jarrett and I think about this a lot. We talk about this with our different guests. What are some of the things that you are seeing that we need to be aware of? To me, it's almost like when you focus on the younger donors, 
it's an amplification of what the trends are that you're seeing overall. So if you're seeing that they want to get engaged, you know, donors are wanting to engage, multiply that times two for the for the younger ones. You know, if you see that they want to know more about you and, and the causes, multiply that times two because they're all over it and they're 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 very, very passionate about it. And so I to me, that's if if I were to walk away with just one thing I think about is the younger people amplify everything that you see as the trends going on today. That my I drop. love it. I know that's a good mic drop. I love that one because I I would have not thought of it, but I see it, you know, and, and you really just helped me uh, to really see what's already in front of us. I mean, mean, everybody's using a tool, they're whizzes at the tools. Everybody's, you know, uh, involved with uh, peer to peer. They're, they're doing a peer to peer. It's just, it's, it all multiplies. Yeah. You know, I love that because I think we dismiss um, the next gen donor concept because we're like, well, they don't have any money and they're young and healthy and they're not dying and leaving it. And there's there's no bequest value here. And so I I don't know, Jarrett, what you think, but it just seems like we dismiss it and we're like, yeah, that's the future and it, it, it should be good. But we don't cultivate it because it doesn't seem to have those immediate, you know, returns. Sometimes they can make up for that by having passion for your yes your cause. Having passion, having friends, being able to galvanize groups of people. Um, yeah, there's a lot of power in the younger uh, young and younger is relevant, right? Like it's just <laughs> uh, there, yeah. There there's... have to be terms. Younger is sometimes forty five. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think too. One of the things we talked a lot about is this transference of wealth that's occurring right now in our nation, and so, you know. These are males and females that are wage, you know, earners. They're they're the most educated people, you know, that we've had in the history of our nation. And so, um, a lot of them are struggling with with uh, educational debt, but their their prospects are good, and they are inheriting money. And so, this is a real discussion that we need to be having and be aware of. Um, it's not just a yeah when they're in their forties, they're going to have more you know, donor power. No, it's, it's happening now and we, we dismiss it. Um, and I also think Matt, it's interesting. You gave us some insight into their corporate relationships and how that money, and you, you're seeing that day in and day out, um, that, that funding that can come through those employees. And so, right. right. All right. The average employee that goes through the giving fund gives about $1,250 a year. Wow. So that's, you know, I mean, it's not, Massive amounts, but it's real money, and and they're and many of them are young, and they're just learning, and they'll be givers the rest of their lives and their careers. Love yeah, it. Love that it. is powerful. I I did not know that that stat, so that's a really powerful stat, Matt. This has been phenomenal. Uh, really grateful to have you here, as we refer to often in the hot seat, but really having the conversation with us. Um, it, it's really timely, and as we mentioned in the green room chatter, most. If not, well, not all, because we know that to be true, but most of our organizations are looking at a new fiscal year of the July 1. So, um, you know, really good information here. Again, today's guest, Matt Nash, joins us as the executive director from the Black Baud Giving Fund. Check them out, blackbaudgivingfund.org. And if you get a check from them, don't question (laughs) it. (laughs) It's legit. So don't question it. Absolutely. Matt, give us your number, your giving number that you started with, because I don't want to leave that on the table. I mean, I guess I do want to leave that on the table as we end our time with you, because that was an astonishing amount of money. In uh, 2022, our collective donors, our employees, and our corporations gave $682 million to 140,000 charities around the world. I mean, it's phenomenal. Huge. And and we are so thrilled that you would come on and, and share your knowledge and your time with us um, because this is a, a really important conversation for all of our viewers and listeners to have. Again, Black Bod Giving Fund, super interesting conversation. And I know, as Jarrett said, you, you've you been in, in the hot seat. You've been a, a gracious guest. Um, we invite you back on when you have some more data to share, because we do say data is sexy on the nonprofit show. So we always 
We're always looking for new new information that's come down the pike um, so that we can get it to our viewers and listeners because um, this is really the only thing that that helps us move forward in so many uh, ways so that we can achieve our mission, vision, and values. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Been joined by my nonprofit nerd. She can be yours too, but my nonprofit nerd, Jarrett R. Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. Again, you can join us live at the Cultivate um, event that's being sponsored by Fundraising Academy at National University in fabulous San Diego, um, June 1st. We will also be broadcasting live there on June 2nd because we do our Friday Ask and Answered episodes with Fund Fundraising Academy. And so we're gonna stay over in San Diego and actually do that from uh, the National University campus for that second day. And so that's gonna be really an interesting thing and, and, and a different opportunity, Jarrett, because I think we're going to be asking and ask, asking questions of the Fundraising Academy folks that's more in line with what has been their trajectory in fundraising. Like how did they manage their careers? How did they overcome disappointments or, or celebrate their successes? You know, what has been their journey? And so it's gonna be a very interesting um, opportunity to look at some of these experts and see what they've done. And some of them are very young starting out and some of them I'm gonna say are a little bit more seasoned. How about that, Jared? <laughs> Good. I, yes, I think that's great. I'm looking forward to it. I will be there um, as well as presenting and really excited for the conversation. It's their inaugural one. So um, who doesn't want to be in San Diego in June? Oh my gosh. I know. I can I can feel my hair frizzing up as we speak and <laughs> in my skin absorbing that. Having lived in the living in the desert, San Diego is the best. Hey, again, everybody, we want to thank our presenting sponsors who are with us day in and day out. Um, more than 800 episodes now moving into our fourth year. And those are these amazing folks that do not dictate our editorial calendar. And I want to make that very clear. You know, we, we do our show um, without their influence, if you will. And that's a really important thing. And those people include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, these are the folks that join us day in and day out. Hey, this has been a great conversation. Um, Jarrett came up with the name MASH. I think that's Matt Nash. That's gotta be your new, you know, moniker. <laughs> I know. Hopefully I'm not the only one that's ever done that, but if, oh, if you so, are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even better. I'll yeah. own it. Okay. We're, we're going to own that. I yeah, think, right. and, and now you I'll get my coffee, Matt. So next yeah. time I'm sure it won't happen. <laughs> you need to start an e-newsletter and call it the mashup. Yes, I'm just okay. saying. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> just say, cause that's a, win that's a winning brand. Hey, Matt Nash. You've been just a delight to have on The Nonprofit Show. And as we end every episode of The Nonprofit Show, we like to leave everyone with this message. And that is to stay well so you can do well. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you here tomorrow.